All right, uh, let's talk about how to implement inheritance using uh, SQL. You know, as we uh, discussed uh, earlier, you know, there is no native support in, um, in SQL uh, for a modeling um, uh, inheritance, right? So for instance, if, if you might have, a, if you have something like this where you have some kind of base, base class, right? And then you have three subclasses that are inheriting from a base class, right? there's no support you know, there's no native support of how to convert this into a relational model. Right? We saw, you know, we saw an alg algorithm, a couple algorithms, uh, a couple of weeks back that, you know, helped us convert, you know, tables and one-to-many relationships, right, between those tables into an equivalent relational database, yes? A relational schema. And vice versa, start from a relational schema into a, a, an equivalent uh, uh, class diagram, yes? Uh, but nowhere have we looked at how to convert these, these types of, um, of class diagrams. Right? And there is no native support for it. Uh, so we have three different strategies of how to implement this. And they are, they are referred to as the joint, single table, and the table per class strategies. Right? There's three different ways of doing it. Uh, the, um, the, uh, the joint version is called the normalized, also referred to as the normalized strategy. The, uh, the single table is also referred to as the denormalized strategy, right? And then you have a uh, table per, per class version, which is kind of like the best of both worlds, right? Uh, the first two they have, um, have pros and cons, right? Of which one would you choose to, to, to implement inherit, uh, inherited inheritance? Uh, and uh, the third tries to borrow the best of both worlds, right? Tries to uh, mar marry to bo the both strategies, okay? Uh, so let's take a look at uh, the uh, first strategy, the joined strategy. Right? Uh, so the, the joined strategy, uh, what it tries to do is says, well, I'm going to try and be as faithful as possible to the class diagram. Here there are four classes. Well, there should be four tables. Right? That's kind of intuitive. And, uh, and, and the idea is that presumably, uh, if, if you stay in the object world, the fill-in-the-blanks uh, subclass here is inheriting the title, the points, the description, and the instructions, right, from, uh, from, its, from its parent class, correct? Right, that means that if I instantiate, uh, if I have an instance object of fill-in-the-blanks, that object has five attributes, correct? Not only its attributes, but also the, the question attributes, yes? Same thing with true-false. It has, has uh, the attribute that inherits plus the is-true attribute. Right? So that's what we understand by object-oriented uh, technology, uh, uh, inheritance. Uh, but in, uh, when you go back and, and implement this as tables, the way you would implement it would be that you would, you would have a question table that has these four fields, and then you have a fill-in-the-blanks table that only has the variables fields. Right? But each individually, means nothing, right? Uh, typically, well, especially if question is an abstract class. Uh, if question is an abstract class, then you would, there would be no, no, there would be, make no sense to have an instance of a question, right, without an actual type of question. You know, just like having a, a, a you know, some uh, very abstract shape mean, means nothing. Now, you can't have an instance of a shape. You can have an instance of a rectangle, right, or a circle and whatnot, yes? Uh, so same thing here, right? Individually, the tables the, the, mean nothing on their own. Only when you join them, right, that's where the name comes from, when you join records from the fill-in-the-blanks table with records in the question table, then the whole thing me means anything. Make sense? Each one individually means nothing. Uh, so, so here's a, um, how would you implement it using the join strategy. Uh, and my naming convention is that I've, uh, I've prepended my table names with the strategy and then followed by the name of the table based on the class. Right? So here's the, the base, uh, the question, right? The base, uh, uh, the base class uh, uh, question, which has the four attributes, you know, the ID, the description, the instructions, and the points, and the title, sorry. Uh, so yeah, the four attributes are description, instructions, point, and title. The ID is just a primary key, right? That's just because I'm implementing with a relational database. Notice that it's not in the original UML diagram, right? It's only, it's an artifact 
of the fact that I'm using relational databases to implement this. Uh, so it has a, it's, it's auto increment, it's ID, it's a primary key. Everything else is just the four uh, attributes. Are we okay? Uh, so if then we go to the the uh, uh, the uh, the derived class, the true false question, and the and the fill in the blank questions, which they just only add an additional field, right? Which is is true for the true false and variables, right? For the fill in the blanks, which are which. You know, match the uh, the classes, right? Variables and is true. Everybody good? All right. They just add that additional field is true and variables. Uh, but how do we go about enforcing the fact that this is these are not meant to be uh, implemented on their own? Uh, they're meant to be treated or or uh, 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 exist only if a parent exists. Right, so the way we the way we're gonna the way the uh, the strategy works is that uh, you have the uh, primary key ID, and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna force that ID to be the same ID as the parent class, right? Uh, so, for instance, here in the base class, right, the the question might have a description, instructions, points, and title. It'll have an ID maybe one, two, three. Okay. Uh, well, if I if I if I if I want to represent a, a true false question that goes along with that base base record, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to force this to have the same ID, the same one two three, right, by declaring as a primary key. But also notice that it's also a foreign key. It's also a foreign key with that one two three, right, pointing to back to the to its parent. Yes, and and whenever I and whenever I uh, retrieve these two records. I would always make sure that I would join these two these two tables, right? So that uh, so that whenever I want to instantiate the record back in memory, I need to join these two tables and get one, uh, you know, a, a, a subset of the attributes from one table and the subset of the other attributes from another table, and then I have my my whole record. Make sense? Pretty good. These are not meant to be tr uh, used individually. Yes. No, this one points to the other table. Notice that there's a foreign key ID that references the uh, the join based question. This one, join based based question. Okay. Right. Uh, one other thing that uh, we uh, we don't have here, um, I should I should add here a, a um, we should add here also a uh, on delete cascade. I forgot to put that in there. Right, meaning that if this record is removed, then any child that is referencing it also is removed. Right, so they, they live and die together. Right, these these records right that are split in two two different in two di two different uh, tables, but they are actually meant to be interpreted and consider, considered considered uh, as one. Make sense? Right. Yes. Yeah. You would have to insert into two tables. So you would not be inserting it. Typically, it would be either through a store procedure uh, or through some API that does it for you. Yes, right. And so that, that's why you would never do it yourself. Uh, you, you would delegate that to uh, libraries such as JPA. JPA would do it for you. You would never do this, you manually doing this, because it would be very error prone. Yes. Yes. Uh, no, it's an example of inheritance, <laughs> right? But there's a one-to-one, -to -one, so there's no one-to-many, there's no many-to-many, -many, there's, there's only a one-to-one, -one, right? So you have one record that has a one-to-one -one relationship with another record, right? So they, and they all, uh, they're meant to be existing together. When you talk about aggregation and composition, you mean that uh, usually there's a one-to-many, right? There's a one on one side and many on the other, right? And they either are meant to, um, they could exist independently and there would be an aggregation, uh, or they're meant to be a composition where you would perhaps uh, enforce a cascade delete, right? That if you remove one, then the other is also removed. Yes. Yeah. Yes, but uh, but here we're we're not trying to model the uh, one to many, right? Uh, which is the aggregation and composition. In one to many and composition, you typically is a one to many, where you have one record and many records referencing that one record, right? So there's as many on the on, on the other side. Here, there's only one. Right, and we're trying to model this idea of of uh, of uh, of inheritance, 
which is not implemented, is not, is, does, is not natively supported in, 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 uh, in relational database. So, so that, yes, you need more plumbing for this, right? You need a, perhaps a store procedure or a trigger uh, or a, uh, an API such as JPA or a relational database such as Mongoose that would allow you to enforce uh, uh, this, uh, this, this um, inheritance. Uh, yeah, so here's an example of, um, of looking at the, what the data might look like, right? Uh, where you have objects that contain not only their, the, the base, the base uh, uh, fields, but also the field that they add as an object. Now, there's this one, an examples of, of, uh, of actual objects. Here we have um, a couple of instructions, descriptions, points. These are, this is the, the base question. Uh, and... Um, and they have these primary keys, one, two, three. And these, so these are three questions. Uh, perhaps some of them are true, false. Some of them are uh, fill in the blanks. And so here we have, we have one, true, false, and, and two, fill in the blanks. Oh, wait, just one and one, sorry. Uh, we have, a, we have a, a true, false, which is uh, the value is true, right? And it's pointing to the three here, right? So it's pointing to this three over here. Right? Description is three, four, five. Whereas this one is pointing to the two. This two is pointing to the two over here. Okay, so these, the, first, the, the last two here are a true-false and a, and a fill-in-the-blanks uh, question. Right, spread over three tables. Okay? Uh, yes? You have to join them. Yeah, you have to join the... You have to join the uh, primary key here, which al it's, it's also a foreign key. You have to join it with the primary key of the other table. So is it a self-referencing? Uh, no, self-referencing is when, when in one table, one record references another record in the same table. So it's not a table. Yeah, it's, yeah, these are different tables, yes. Okay. Uh, so, so this is the, uh, the preferred way of implementing it from a DBA perspective, from a pure uh, database uh, point of view, right? It's, uh, it's, um, um, it's spread out across multiple tables. It's fully normalized, right? And, and uh, you know, you spread out the, the different values across multiple tables, yes? Right? It meets first, second, and third normal form. It's beautiful. Uh, but for performance purposes, this is an awful solution, right? Uh, imagine that uh, this inheritance that this inheritance is not just one level of inheritance. Imagine this were two, three, four, five levels of inheritance, okay? Uh, and, and so, and you're trying to retrieve a record that is an instance of, an, of a class that is way, way down in the hierarchy, right? That means that to instantiate that object, right, you'll, you're gonna have to join all the tables in the hierarchy, right? Because the data is spread out across all these tables. Right, so you have to join them all together. It's very, very expensive right, that, that, to do all these joins. Right? So, so typically, we don't, we don't implement it this way right, for, performance, uh, for performance reasons. Right? Uh, instead, uh, the, uh, the most common uh, way to implement it is using a single table right, that is also referred to as the normalized, uh, denormalized implementation. Right? This is the least favorite uh, from, a, from a database purist Right? But it's the favorite for the developer. You know, somebody who actually wants performance. Uh, I want to be able to retrieve data real quick. I don't want to, I don't, I don't need, uh, and also, um, I'm not doing it myself. I'm using some library to do this for me. So in the single table implementation is much, much simpler. Uh, there are no three tables. It's just one table. Right? And, uh, and we collapse right, all the fields in the hierarchy tree. We collapse them into one single table. Right, so, so the base class right, and all the inheritance in the inheritance tree, they all are merged into one single table, which is just the, uh, the base class. So here you have the single table base uh, class question that not only has the four fields, description, instructions, points, and title, but it also has fields from the other two classes, right? The, uh, from the true-false and from the um, uh, fill-in-the-blanks, right? So... Uh, so it's kind of like the reverse of inheritance. It is the base class who has inherited all the fields from its children. 
right? It's kind of it's reverse, in, reverse uh, inheritance, right? Instead of the children inheriting from the parent, the parent is inheriting from uh, the children. The children uh, stealing, the, the parents stealing from the future of their children. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, this implementation is denormalized. You know, basically, um, uh, you know, we've, we've collapsed into everything so into one table. Uh, but we need to be able to distinguish, you know, whether this record meant one type of question or the other type of question. Which was it? Was this originally a, uh, a true-false question, or was this originally a, a, uh, a fill-in-the-blank question? What was it? How, sh I sh how should I interpret this particular record? Right? And for that, we add an additional field, a discriminator field, the D-type. See that? And that D-type typically will be the name of the original class that was used to instantiate this object. Right? So the value of that D-type will either be fill-in-the-blanks or true-false. Okay. And depending on which, which, uh, which value that is, uh, you either ignore or uh, pay attention to, the, to these two, these two uh, fields here. Right? If, it's a, if it's a true, if it's a true false question, then you only pay attention to the is true. If it's a fill in the blank question, then you only pay attention to the variables. But you always pay attention to the other four, because those will always have values. Yes? Yep. What what's the redundant? So suppose you just move on to the set of questions. Right. That 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 exactly that what what you end up with is with a with a very sparse table where you have lots of nulls everywhere. And that's what uh, DBAs hate, right? That you have a lot of empty spaces, uh, a lot of wasted space. I'm sorry? Well, that's what we had, right? We did split it up into, into two different tables, right? And, uh, and, and, and we, we had the, the problem of joining, or of having to join the tables. All the fields, which is the hybrid. This is the hybrid rep uh, solution, is to uh, try to have the best of both worlds, right? I, 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 I like the idea of splitting it up into multiple tables. It makes more sense. Uh, I don't like the, the, the idea of having to join, right? Uh, so in, in this case, uh, it's, it's more intuitive to what we would expect. You have the base class, uh, and, uh, and, then, and then you would have the other two classes are actually inherit from their parents, right? Where you have the, the true-false, and not only has its, its field, the is true, but also the, all the fields from its parent, uh, description, instructions, point, and title, uh, and, um, and the values would... Uh, would uh, exist at uh, at the at the leaves of these, right? So so there's no need to join, right? There's no need to walk the tree uh, in the inheritance, right? All the all the data would live here at the at the leaves. Same thing for the fill in the blank, uh, where the again the the values all live at the leaves of this hierarchy. Okay, yeah. So this is kind of like the best of both worlds. Uh, the more common one that most folks use is this one, the single the single table. Right, it's the fastest. Uh, uh, you don't have all the tables to, to, to manipulate. You do have perhaps uh, you know potentially a lot of empty spaces with lots and lots of nulls. Uh, but you know space is cheap, right? and uh, and and as long as you have a library doing it for you, right, and retrieving data for you, this is uh, typically the what you know folks do in the industry. It's a simple. Everything is in one table. It's simple to, to uh, you don't have to follow other tables and see where things are. Um, yep. And typically you have libraries doing, you know, JPA, Mongoose, uh, do all the conversion for you. 